now now we fast forward to now you're out of the military. You're out of the military. And what was that feeling like? So for those people that's maybe watching this podcast and they're in the military and they scared to make that transition, they we're gonna just say September first of two thousand twenty one. September 1st, 2021, you're retired. What was that feeling like you as a man emotionally and just the financial landscape of it, of knowing, hey, I don't have a military paycheck to count on because it came first and 15th like clockwork, no matter what. So what was that like? Yeah, no, I think think it took a couple months to really uh, get my footing because – I'm used to going to work every day and then getting a paycheck, you know, first and 15th. And now all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm getting paid at the first of every month or, or, or a day or two before. And that's a little different too, right? So in the army, you get paid on the first and 15th. Your, your check is kind of divvied up and now you're getting everything on the first. I had to completely switch up my whole, and I, I told you guys, I made a next out spreadsheet and that thing had it, dialed in from okay this is what i pay first to 15th is what i pay 16th to 30th right and now all of a sudden i had to make it like first to 30th right so um it was it was it was a scary time you know it wasn't something that i was used to now there are some things that have come along that have helped us along our way uh things are things are good you know i will tell you this it's nice on this side Right. So, so uh, you know, I, although there was some scary times and not understanding what was on the other side, because I had only known that since I was 19 and here I am 39 and about to be 40, like that's all I knew, but it is nice on this side, but understand that there are certain things that you have to do to make sure you're prepared for this side, right? Like you can't just say, I'll wake up tomorrow and I'm out of the army and, Everything's going to be okay. Like you have to take certain measures to make sure you're going to be okay on this side. Biggest questions, uh, probably Kirby and I's favorite topic is, does your family, whether internal family or, you know, cousins, uh, parents, um, does your family support the direction that you've taken uh, from, you know, joining Kirby's class? You know, some might call him, you know, the prophet, crazy man. <laughs> so, you know, not this everyone, crazy. Not everyone <laughs> can just accept what crazy or what, what crazy says, what Kirby says. So, yeah. It's kind Kirby, of scares some people out there, but. Kirby is a man of many names. <laughs> right? yeah. but, uh, I've, I've been fortunate enough that I've known Kirby a long time and, and uh, we've become good friends for a long time. And this was before he started getting into some things that, and understanding his, his path. Right. So as he was going along his path and he would talk to me about it a little bit and I would take little nuggets. Um, I was fortunate enough to learn along the way and, and kind of gather those things down at the same time in my path, my biggest goal with a family was mm-hmm. pay the debt. Like that was the only thing on my mind, pay the debt. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, I've talked to my brothers about what I'm doing and, you know, with the, with the, whether it's friends or um, family, I tell them what, I, what I'm doing now and they're like, that's great. You know, I don't think they fully understand it. So that's kind of as far as it goes. Okay. Right? It doesn't yeah. really go further than that. They don't, you know, there's not a lot more input than that. Um, I think we all want to see ourselves be successful, but at the same time, they're doing their thing and, you know, they, they know that I'm kind of on this journey. I don't think they fully grasp what it is that I'm doing right now. So if you, if you look back, if you look back from, um, I'm not going to go back to private level yet, but if you look back to, from retired, V from when you retired six months ago till now, did do you believe that what you thought retirement was and where you at now is it close to your ideal of what you thought it was? No, I, you know, I, 
the moment I decided to drop my retirement paperwork, um, it was a reality check. Okay, now I need to build a cushion um, for me and my family to make it. Just, I mean, it was really just making it through this transition. Mm-hmm. And then, but in, in the last year and a half, um, I've kind of learned that there's a whole, there, there, there's so many different levels to build upon, right? Like it, whether it's, whether it's stocks or stock options or, or your, your Roth IRA or, or, or um, getting into real estate, like there's so many different levels to get into to build on what you have. Right. And, and I think that when I first said, Hey, I'm going to retire, it was okay. I was thinking about what's, what's my, what's my retirement going to be. Right. What maybe, maybe my disability, what could my disability be? All right. I'm, I'm good with that. And then what most, what most military, and if, if you're military and you're watching this and you know, you've heard this before, but I'm going to be a Walmart greeter. Right. I'm going to be handing out stickers with a smiley face saying, welcome to Walmart, making minimum wage. And I'm going to be happy with that. Right. So and I, and I think that that was kind of where my mentality was uh, when I said, hey, I'm going to call a quiz. Just just make ends meet. Just just make sure that the bills are paid, there's food on the table and keep it moving and you're good. Right. But I started understanding in the last 18 months that there's so much more to do financially. And, and it's not so much that I have to work harder, right? But I have to understand where to put my money, how to put my money so that my money is working harder. So it's growing faster than certain rates. For example, like the inflation rate, right? I have to make sure that my money is working harder than the inflation rate. Make my money run faster than what the inflation rate is running. So, I mean, that was that was a big, that was a, a big, light bulb for me it wasn't just making ends meet it was getting ahead and so when i'll say this um alex to you you know when when you say that you know uh soaked up some information and it seems like i've been doing this for a long time i'll be honest when i put my retirement paperwork in reality really smacked me in the face and i kind of took that in stride and tried to understand, hey, there's more to it than just mm-hmm. your minimum payment's 100, make sure you make 100, right? Like there's way more to life than just living from when you get paid to the next time you get paid. There's a lot more to life than that. Yeah, I'm learning a lot from this because, I mean, I was never in the military, but growing up, I always heard from whether, uh, you know, pe- mostly heard from people that weren't even in the military, but they would say, Oh, I know this guy who, you know, joined the military at 18, retired at 38, and now he's set for life because he has a pension. I mean, how true is that as far as take care of you? Wait, 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 wait. Before you answer that, before you answer that, so you you spoke about, you know, retiring and being a Walmart greeter. How would that would have worked out also for you if you just became Walmart greeter with the military retirement? So for the people that's watching that's worried about that. Luckily, luckily from where, from where I'm at, Florida is going to a $15 minimum wage in October because, <laughs> you know, I mean, minimum wage is, is peanuts, man. And, and with the way gas prices are and food prices are, and a lot of this had to do with the pandemic. Nobody could have ever saw this coming, but, um, it, 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 you know, these things aren't going to, yes, you're going to be able to pay your bills. That's it. Are you, you know, if you're happy with that, I, I pay my bill. Okay. Right. Like there's a whole world out there. And I think, the, I think the military kind of gives us that perspective where, there's so Wait, hold on. Be, be, before you say that part, so you're saying if with just the military retirement, which is half your base pay, and working at Walmart, you could still, so in like in your situation, you already had your bill set up for your pay as being uh, whatever rank you left at, Sergeant First Class, sorry. Right. So whatever rank you left at. So when you left it there, your base pay, and then you retired, just retired with half pay, 
And being a Walmart greedy, you can still pay your bills? No, no, not at all. So in order for me, let's say, let's say we 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 round the numbers up. Let's say I make two thousand dollars a month, you know, mm-hmm. where I was making sixty five hundred dollars a month, you know, in, right. in the um so that's a forty five hundred dollar a month difference. Right. Uh, what's that times twelve? Uh, 48, 54, 54,000. So I would need to make up 54,000. That's, that's after tax, right? So, um, you know, I'm making, and now I need to find a job making about 70, 70,000 just to make ends meet where I was beforehand. I mean, that's, listen, finding it, going into a a, a job and say, Hey, I need to start somewhere, but I need to start at 70,000. That's not really what people want to hear, right? Like that is not what employers want to hear, right? So, um, it, it was, uh, and again, it goes back to, you know, knowing that I was putting my retirement paperwork in, and understanding the financial burdens ahead, um, and 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 thinking forward, it was a smack in the face. Like, hey, you can't just live day to day. Right. Like that's not going to work anymore because there's you're, you're going to a different side and you're not going to be bringing in the same thing. But you still have these bills to pay. Right. So what do you do? What I mean, what do you. Do? All right. So I, I love I love where you're going with this, but I got to ask you to give a message out there. What message would you give to all those women that all those women, family members, and friends of people that's in the military, then it's going to Alex Point. That <laughs> that believe, oh, if you marry a soldier, you're set for life. Oh man, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's not really military wise, you know. But I can tell you from the military side, um, you would think getting married. Oh, we got the two of us working on it together, and and to, and, and to a certain extent, you know, I, I've been very fortunate that. Um, you know, my wife, I love my wife to death. She's been work. She's been, she's been my rock, right? And she's allowed me to succeed at work because she takes care of basically everything else. Right. So, and, and, and that's all well and good, but the reality is that just because you come in and you're both working hard at it, you're both also bringing in two different depths into it right you're both bringing in you know whatever other costs that are associated with being married and finding a living like that's not um that's not a way out right like oh i just find somebody now they'll meet 50 percent. i'll meet 50 percent. now i only got to put half in like that's not how that works you know right 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 and so so what you're saying to me is people in the military really don't make any money that's what you're saying um, so I was, I used to be a recruiter, right? So, uh, <laughs> so, I, so I can, I can sell you on joining the military, right? Like there's a lot of great benefits to joining the military and there, and there are, you know, um, but money ain't one of them. Money's not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what people and Alex, just like you said, I mean, I've heard people say it. I mean, said about me and things like that, because I was in the military, they think that, oh, yeah, I'm set for life. You know, you're set for life. You're in the military. They really don't. When I joined the military, and V, you was about the same same time frame. I think you was in before me. My paycheck, literally, when I was in basic training, the 1st and 15th, was like 316 bucks yeah. on the 1st and the 15th. So it was like 630 bucks a month. Yeah. So just think, if I got a car, I'm done. That's yeah, it, no, because of court. It, it, touching on that, my first car in the, I was at Fort Hood and some guy picked me up and I, I didn't know I was getting scammed at this point. Uh, but he's like, hey man, you, you know, you want to, what are you doing walking? You need a ride? Yeah, let me get a hop in the car. And he takes me to a dealership. I didn't know he had a, a deal with the dealership that every right. person he brought there, he gets 300 bucks, right? right? So I go there and I bought my first car, which was it was a Mercury Mystique, which I called my Mercury Mistake. And I bought that car at 18% interest. Right. Yeah, my first one was at 16 point. My first one was like 18 point, or no, 
eight percent interest. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was so. But I didn't know any different. I thought that was that was that's what interest rates were. So you know, right. I mean, yeah, and it's so if you think about it, so making six hundred bucks a month, you add in a car payment. The car payment, the your like your Mercury mistake, like you said. It costs you about four or five hundred bucks. You add in insurance being 19 years old. That's another 200 bucks. That's your whole paycheck. Right. Oh, but, you, but you know you got to have a cell phone. So right. Right. You, you are, you're almost over. Right. Cars just sitting in the parking lot because you don't even have money for gas well, to even it, get from it, point A to B. What about the gold chain I bought when I was in AIT? That's another thing. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, and, yeah. And, again, and that was it. Like, did it fit under my, my whatever I made, whether, let's say it's 600 a month. Did it fit under that six hundred bucks, right? Like I, I would, I would take it all the way to five seventy five in monthly payment, in minimum monthly payments, as long right. as I knew that I could make it, it fit under that six hundred bucks. Then I, and then I knew I was, oh, I'm okay, you know, I got it. Yeah. What I didn't realize was I still had to eat, right? Like I still had to, right? Like, yes, yeah, eat ass, right? Like there was certain things that, you know, I, I just kind of took for granted. So let's transition a little bit. Uh, so well, now we out of the military. Now we out of the military. So now you talked about how you didn't know what it meant to make money work for you. You know, you heard that saying plenty of times, but you didn't know how it worked. So now after the knowledge you didn't gain, you know, over your 18 months, maybe in the class or maybe just, you know, out and about reading and things like that. What is your message to other soldiers or other people in general that live the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle like you did of what does it mean to make your money work for you? So the, the number one thing was in it where I was very fortunate was before I got out, I paid off a bunch of debt. Right. So. Right. Now that cleared out there's some headway um, in between what I was making to what I owed. And so there's some space there. Um, so now what do you do with that? Right. So right. It, it, you and I have talked for years and, and we talked about paying off the debt. Um, but I really wasn't sure what to do with that money at that point. And I got into the class and uh, started started learning about stock options and, and, and things like that. But um it wasn't until one class, it was, and I'll never forget this, it was, it was in August um, this past year, and you put on a video of what do um, wealthy people do that broke or poor people don't, right? And so I'm listening, it was five things, and I'm listening, and one was, you know, getting into real estate, and there's some different things, but one was leverage debt, right? I'm like that. Like I, I fought so hard to get out of that. Like, why am I why right. would I think about getting back into that? Um, right. but to use that debt to create more income, you know. Right. I mean, because the only thing you've known of debt is is uh, using debt to buy depreciated assets like cars and different things like that. So you didn't understand the other side of it. Think about swimming, right? If, right. you're, if you're in a pool and you're swimming from point A to point B, you're in a lap pool. So when you're in a lap pool, you swim from this side to this side, right? And then all of a sudden, as oh, halfway there, you say, oh, I'm going to buy a car. Now think about putting a 45-pound weight on your back while you're swimming, right? Right. Now with that car, you also have your insurance. So put another 20-pound weight on top, right? Yeah. And now you still got to make it to the other side. And, and as you're going to that other side, you're just – compounding weight right so now i just shed all that weight and i'm thinking to myself that that is a bad thing and for the most part i would say for anybody watching this i mean you you want to be very careful about what you're trying to acquire right like what do you want why do you want it why is it important to you is it important to you or is it important to the people around you and what they think of you, right? Uh, there, was, there was one, matter of fact, there was one thing in the class that, that this, this hit home. And it was uh, looking around your house and seeing what do you have in your house that you bought for other people, right? And so um, whether it's, 
uh, different trinkets or things like that or whatever, whatever it is. Like, what do you have in your house that you really, I mean, you can't use it. You can't do anything with it, right? But you bought it so that when people come over, they go, oh, that's nice, right? But you spent your money on it and that money is gone. It, and like you said a few minutes ago, it's a depreciating asset. You, if you go to resell it again, you're not going to get the same value back as what you spent. All right. So, okay. um, so there's that. But mm-hmm. when I got into the class, I started kind of understanding that. So I want to um, selling options and making some money off of it. And I talked to you know after the class where you said where you, where you played that video and you said that uh, wealthy people they leverage debt. So that was, that was in one side. And at the same time, I started talking to my brother and I was telling him what I was doing and with the stock options and, and, and this, this and that, what I was learning in the class. And then he said, you don't have an idea problem. You have a capital problem. You need money to fund your idea. Right? And I'm like, wait a minute. I have an asset. I have something that could be used as an asset. Let me right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got you. Let me put it that way. That's something that could be used in assets. So I wound up taking a, a home equity line of credit out of my home. Now this was a big risk. You know, my wife and I both had to go in on it because we're both on the house, and so it was thirty-five thousand. And right, um, it takes a lot of trust at that point because at the end of the day, I'm moving the money. She has no idea. She's just kind of along for the ride. Just kind of you know, trusting me to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to. Now, the line of credit was over 20 years if I pay the minimum of $290 a month. Um, but, I, you know, Kirby, you and I did the math that, you know, a $720 payment will pay it off in four and a half years. So then my goal became, okay, let's, let's round it off. Let's round it off $200 a week four weeks in a month, $800 a month. So, it, it, you know, $800 a month will pay this thing off in under four years. You know, even though I have 20 years to pay it off, it'll pay it off in under four years. So, but basically I took that money and I'm putting that to work in the stock options in, in selling puts and selling calls. So every week, as long as I, you know, push a couple buttons, sell put, sell calls, whatever it is that I'm putting that money to work for. When I say I didn't know how to make my money work for me, well, this is exactly what I'm doing. Like I took the bank's money, I put it to work, that generates $200 a week, I collect that over a month, I make $800 in that month, and I pay the bank back, and it didn't cost me any time, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not, factoring in the, that into my bills. I'm not going to work an extra eight hours to make sure I pay it off. Like I took that money, I did something with it, and that money is generating money that's paying itself back. So in under four years, it's paid back, but I have the 35,000 off to the side. They basically gave me 35,000, you know? All right, All right. It didn't come out of my pocket. Um, now, I did this in November. First payment was due in December, January, February, March, April. I already have the payment from May. So we're six months in, and this thing is just moving like clockwork. I got to be on it every week. It's important to me because if I don't, if I don't do this, if I don't, if I don't put my money to work, then I got to work for it, right? And that's not that's right. Not yeah, that's not what we do. Yeah. So when you, when you say you got to do this, you how how long do it take you? To actually do a trade or anything like that to put your money to work. So I I, I te- typically uh, start following on Monday around nine o'clock. Um, you know, by nine thirty the market is is kind of rolling. Um, by ten o'clock I, I put my trade in, and then you know I'll follow it throughout the week just because I'm kind of uh, obsessive compulsive about it. But right for the most so the action the action you took took you about how long to do. Uh, that actually, you have to take off. It, it, it takes me less than five minutes. It takes me less than five minutes. I mean, if, if I wasn't a, so uh, obsessive about it, it'd take me probably less than that, right? But like, I already know what my strike price is for next week and what I'm going to do for next week. I, I know that already. It's Friday. 
I can't do anything until Monday. It sucks that the that the market's closed on Saturday, Sunday. I don't know who, right. who made that rule. They need to, they need to <laughs> fix that. But, um, but I already know what I'm doing on Monday, right? So right. when Monday comes at 9 o'clock, I start following the market at 9.30, start looking at how things are moving, 10 o'clock, make my move. And, you know, and then, then I'll, so that's Monday at, let's say, 10 o'clock. I don't pick it back up. I don't make another move probably until about Thursday night, maybe Friday morning and kind of understand where the market's at, figure out, all right, am I going to, am I going to, for those that don't know about stock options and put selling puts and calls, <clears throat> I got to figure out whether I'm going to let it ride or I'm going to move it out to the next week. Right. So make more money. Right. And so I, I just, I just got to make that decision punch a couple of numbers in it take again it takes me another five minutes at the end of the week so all told it seems like a long process it takes about 10 minutes five minutes at the beginning of the week five minutes at the end of the week i make 200 bucks a week you know at a minimum the extra money um alex you asked me this in it actually in the class a few weeks ago what do you do with the extra money that you have and to be honest with you there's a stock that i'm i'm involved in that i really like and so mm -hmm. I've used that to buy more of that stock, right? So um, I've kind of just kept that ball rolling. It, at the back of my mind, that's extra. The first things first is make the $800 payment. Minimum payment is $300, but my minimum payment is $200 a week. So anything over that is is kind of icing on the cake. So just in a, in a monthly time frame, so what do you average – on a, a monthly time frame with the strategy you use and with the stock that you're choosing to use, you make between what and what on a monthly basis? I would say eight to $1,200 a month. So pressing I, the I, button I, about I, for about five minutes a week. Yeah. Well, about 10, 10 minutes a week. And I know I can make 800 bucks a, a month. I know that for a fact. Uh, yeah. Sometimes where I make, I make 12, you know, sometimes 14, but I would say between eight to 1200 bucks a month. Okay. That was one of my questions. The other thing I was going to say was, um, for those who don't know, the five to 10 minutes, how you say it takes about five to 10 minutes. A lot of that five to 10 minutes is just thinking, but the actual action is probably five to 10 seconds. Just, right, right. just pressing the button. Right, right. <laughs> you right, gotta right. Together, you know, what exactly do you want to do? And then just make a move. Two, three, four. It's probably about four buttons. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know um but i i never would have thought that something like this was possible you know right. it, it, the thing is is that again going back to the beginning you guys asked me about my upbringing right what my dad taught me was to work hard if you work hard the rest will take care of itself now my dad he's been in a posture since he was 16 he also does um a little bit of real estate on the side. He owns a few homes and he rents those out. He also does, you know, some pig roast on the side, you know, and, and he'll go there and he'll cook it up and he'll chop it up. And, and that's all part of the show. He's also, a, 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 he plays a trumpet in a band, right? So all of these different avenues of making income, but all those things take time, right? So what he taught me was a strong work ethic and understanding that if you work hard and you maximize your time, you'll bring money in. And, and I, I follow that to this day. At the same time, what I've learned in the last 18 months is we have to understand that you have to stop trading your time for money. If you mm -hmm. can make money without trading your time, now you're getting somewhere, right? If you own a property, you know that whether you wake up in the morning, you know, you wake up, whether you brush your teeth and go to work, or you don't go to work, go to church or whatever, that guy still has to pay his rent. That rent is still going to you. You're still making money. That didn't cost you any time. So it's a mentality switch mm -hmm. of going from understanding, okay, how much am I making per hour? Alex, you, you got to forgive me, man. I'm not a... I'm not a um, a savant by any means. I just I've been learning a lot when I, and I tell everybody I bang the drum 
on this class. I tell everybody I can to get involved. I've just learned so much in the last 18 months. It's unbelievable. No, for I mean, I understand, like you said, like you've only been in the class for 18 months, but you've learned. I mean, it just shows. I mean, like for me, like I started talking to Kirby when I was 21. So I'm 20, I'm about to be 24. So, I mean, relevant, like we're pretty close on the same timeline. And the only things we did different was just go all in. Like, okay, what he's saying is making sense you know, let me just apply myself. And that's why I love your story about taking the home equity line, because you saw an opportunity and you're just like, well, I understand this and I just need capital. So let me give it a shot. And you just took the chance, like a similar story that I can apply to myself, but that is uh, my wife and I were just hanging out with Kirby one day at World of Beer. And we had like 25,000 saved in our bank. And um, he was like, I'm not going to tell you to dump it in the stock market, but I would. <laughs> so we just went ahead and we we're like, my, well, my wife was one like, yeah, yeah, do, go ahead, do what he says. So I was like, all right, <laughs> so just dumped all 25 in the market. So no, I, I tell you, just, just by listening to that, I mean, that's a, that's a huge boost. Uh, you know, my wife supports me again, you went to get their home equity line of credit out, you know, obviously we both needed to go in and this and that and but for the most part she says hey you know okay now that we've done this i'm trusting you with this you do it um but for your wife to be behind you going no do it you know yeah so i mean that's that's a huge that's a huge boost you know um and my wife is very supportive you know don't get me wrong uh but at the same time it's more um, where she's like, hey, you have the idea, kind of go for it, and I'll be here to figure out whether or not it works or not. If it doesn't work, I'll still be here, and if it works, yeah. great, right? So it's kind of a different different thing, you know. Um, it, it, yeah. it, and I, I think your one of your questions kind of delved on this, but – when you start making moves, different moves with your money, um, not everybody's going to understand it, right? So you're going to have people that they won't have an opinion at all, right? Or they will have an opinion. It'll be negative, right? Or they want to have an opinion because they support you, but they're just not sure. Right? They're, right. they're not sure right. what you're doing, how it's going to work out. They don't want to give you this false hope. So two of those three people are not going to tell you anything. Right? The only people that are going to tell you something are the ones that are going to say, hey, that's not going to work. You know? And so right. how, how do you get through that? Right. Thanks all for watching the video and the content that we provided today. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Please share the content. Please share the content with all family and friends. Maybe they're not looking for financial advice or financial education right now, but they may look for it in the future. So please share the content with any and everyone. Uh, also, if you want to hear more content from us about different topics that we haven't covered yet or things that you would like to hear about, please comment in the comment section below. Also, remember my two rules. Number one, always question information received. And number two, if you knew better, you would do better. And again, thanks for liking the channel and we'll see you next time.